In this video, I'm gonna showcase how to build a tapered column here. That will be one single plate with one seam, and then basically it's going to have eight different sides. So if I come in here to the plan view, I will start out on the edit tab here, and there is a construction object menu, construction circle. I'm just gonna go ahead and start out with uh, basically specifying a circle just for reference here based on the design diameter. So let's say the diameter is three foot, so I'll just do one foot six here. And then let's say that um, you know I have a, a two foot up at the top, so I'll just pick this and then I'll just go out, uh, let's say if I just start typing in 12 and I have my mouse hover this direction, it will give me a basically two foot diameter circle. Now what I might also do is I'm just gonna put a construction line in here and I'm actually gonna go from this point um, to this point here. And uh, when I go in and double click on this, we can see the two points there and that's just for me to have something to pick to. I'm gonna set this extension up here in the upper right to zero, just so that way the line isn't extending past that. I'm gonna then select on that by windowing from left to right around just that construction line. I'll say copy special, rotate, and then I'm gonna pick this uh, middle point here or this uh, intersection as the center of rotation point. Now, if I just go to my calculator and I basically take 360 degrees divided by uh, eight sides, essentially I'm gonna get 45 degrees. So I need seven copies of this uh, to rotate around that point at 45 degrees. So I will do that. That will add it basically at 45 degree increments all around. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to my steel tab here. There is a plate, uh, create contour plate command. I'm going to activate that. Then what you'll do is you'll basically pick on uh, uh, each of these corner points. And once you've picked the four points for the trapezoid, you'll just middle mouse button to close out the contour. And then when you select on the plate, you'll see the four different uh, points here. Now, if I do control plus P on my keyboard, which will rotate me into a 3D view or control P will return back to 2D. And then you can also just hold down control and then middle mouse button to rotate into 3D. But basically, if I select on this plate here, we wanna stretch these two points to be up, uh, say 20 feet in the air for high, uh, basically to define the height of this column. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt key on my keyboard, so I'm holding it down, and then I'm windowing from left to right only around these two points. You'll now notice that these two points are selected and these two points are not. I'm then going to right click and say Move Special Linear. And then basically what I can do is I can just, um, you know, either pick the points to enter the distance or I know I'm going in the, D, the Z direction 20 feet, so I'll just specify that. These two points are selected, these are not. So this is basically gonna be like a stretch. And now those points have gone straight vertical 20 feet in the air, and that represents the height, height essentially of my column. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back here to plan view, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab these, and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually stretch uh, the points back a little bit. And the, the point setbacks that I'm gonna stretch this away from the uh, line here, which is like kind of like my bend lines or the center of my bend radius, this is gonna represent half the distance for the radius here. The other thing is, is relative to the depth of the plate. So over on the right-hand side in the properties panel, if I want all of this to be controlled from the inside radius, then I would set the position of the material to be pushing outward. If I want it to be on the inside, then I basically push the material, material inward. So let's just go ahead and say outward here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna window around these two points and I'm just gonna say move and I'm just gonna move them in towards these other points by doing, you know, let's say half inch, this is a little bit too large, but let's just say that that's it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and window uh, again. So sorry, what I'm doing is I'm holding down the Alt key on my keyboard and I'm windowing from left to right so that way I'm only grabbing these two points and I'm not grabbing these points. So again, if I just click on the background that clears my selection, I select on the plate first, hold down Alt, window from left to right around just these two endpoints, right click and I'm gonna choose the move command. And if I click on the, like basically the snap here at this point, so there's my first click and you can see at the lower left hand corner tech list prompting me what to do. And then if I hover my mouse basically over this second point, you'll see that like a direction is defined. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start typing in on my keyboard one half inch. And right when I start typing in a number, you'll see a numeric location dialog box appears. Now what'll happen is it's going to stretch these points or move them in the direction from the original point I picked to the direction of where my snap was hovered. 
and then I'll say okay, and now that's been stretched. I'm gonna do Control Z to undo that, and I'm gonna repeat the command. So I'm gonna highlight the plate, I hold down Alt on my keyboard, window left to right over just those two points. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose the move command. And then I'm going to uh, actually click here. So if you look at the lower left hand corner, it says pick the origin for moving. So we're moving from here and I'm just hovering my mouse. So I'm letting it naturally snap to this end point here, but I'm not clicking on it. Okay. So from here, I'm just hovering my mouse over this so that way it defines a direction. Then I start typing on my keyboard half inch and now I have that setback. From here, I just do cop, right click, uh, you know, select on the plate, right click and I say copy special, and then I'll just say rotate. Again, we've already got this origin point here, 45 at seven, and so we'll interrupt and we'll just have the plate selected, say copy, and now we have all the plates on each side. So now you just have to decide which uh, face is going to be, or which location is gonna be your actual seam point. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to the plate command and I'm gonna use this create cylindrical bent plate and I'm gonna pick the first plate, then the second. And then basically you just keep repeating this command. And then here, if I want this seam to be over here, then I just would pick the first plate and then this last plate, um, just so that way the seam ends up over here. Now, in this case here, we want that to be a zero, zero value, right? So again, we're going to hold down Alt key, window from left to right around those points. I'll just use the move command, and we will move from here, hover my mouse over towards this direction, type in half inch, and now the seam zeroes out. I'll repeat by selecting the plate, hold down the Alt key, window from left to right only over those points. I'll right click and use the move command, and I'll say that I'm moving from here, hovering over this direction, type in half inch, and now I have a completed tapered column plate. Now to control the radiuses, I could have actually entered it in when I was inputting it, but if I uh, go down here on my bottom menu, at the bottom of Tecla Structures, there's this direct modification icon. Um, if I have that active, so that way it's turned on, then basically what I can do is I can select on the plate, and then I can see that there's this line right here and it will show a dimension for the radius. I'm just gonna type in half inch, press enter, and then you'll see that the radius would change. So if you need to modify this afterwards, you can easily come in and just go to each of these locations and change it. And I probably should have changed it all at once like when I first was inputting uh, this. It looks like if I hold down control, um, it'll allow me to select multiple, basically intersections on this bent plate at the same time. And so let's just select these. And then if I come in here and I just type in half inch, it looks like it modifies all of those at the same time. So let's just verify that. Nope, looks like it did not do that. So I need to do it one at a time. So we'll just go back to these. And then you can repeat that process essentially around the plate. Now, one last thing I will showcase is that if you actually tried to make a drawing of this, um, you know, you might not get what you want if you're trying to make an assembly drawing and you're gonna add uh, additional parts and cuts and things to this. So one thing that I suggest doing is actually coming in here and modeling in a fake or dummy beam. And so I'm just gonna pick that origin point at the center here at the bottom. And if you type O on your keyboard, you'll see down here on the lower right hand corner, see where my mouse is hovering. Uh, when I say O on my keyboard, it turns on ortho or off. When you see the big O here on, that means ortho kicks in. So if you actually just hover your mouse until it goes straight vertical with the Z axis, now we can basically snap to that orthogonal direction. So I'm just gonna start typing. So again, I haven't clicked anything. I'm just hovering my mouse in this direction so it locks with the Z axis. And then I'm just gonna type in 20 foot. So when I start typing, it basically locks that direction wherever I was hovered to. And now I'm going to get something that goes 20 feet up into the air. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this to some dummy plate here. So we'll just change the properties. We'll call this um, whatever the name of this we want to be. So tapered column, sorry, this is the profile. So let me actually change this to something like plate uh, one half by four, just something in there that's representative. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then we'll just hit enter or go down here to modify. And then um, what I'll do is I'll also center this so we can actually switch um, basically the depth here to middle. So it'll go, uh, it'll orientate the plate in the middle of that part and the picking points. And then the next uh, thing that we want to do here is we're going to take this plate and we're going to actually attach it to uh, this other plate and make that as an assembly. 
Now, one other thing is I do want to change this material grade to zero density. So when I come in here, I'm going to say zero density uh, because this is a dummy part and I don't want it to affect the weight of the assembly. And we'll just call this in the name tapered column. And again, I can just press enter on my keyboard to modify that. Or if I come down here to the bottom, I can press modify and that changes. And let's just change this to a different class number. Again, modify. All right, so now I'm gonna take this uh, plate here and I want it to be a submaterial of that uh, dummy part and make that attached to that as uh, part of the assembly. So I'm gonna then right click and I'm gonna just go ahead and say assembly and I'm gonna say add to assembly. And so then I pick that piece there and now you'll see that uh, this is basically going to be a submaterial of that. So I'm gonna say inquire assembly. You'll see the yellow part here represents that this is a submaterial attached to that orange part, which is the main part of the assembly. And so then what we'll do is we'll, uh, we could run numbering. And then when we create an assembly drawing, then go to the uh, drawing list here and open this up. So again, this is a type A or assembly drawing. So what'll happen is because we put the dummy part in there, it is gonna show it in the bill material. So we could modify the template here to not show that dummy material, um, or we could change kind of the name or put a profile override with the user defined attributes. But the main reason why I'm showing you this is because we want that dummy material in there because it basically makes a nice uh, flattened orientation of this plate. Um, and you can control basically the views that you want to see on by default here. So like if I wanted, um, basically the top view on so I could just say modify and now it's going to show the top view on here as well in any section views and thing or end views that I might want so the whole reason why I'm doing this dummy plate is so that way we can kind of define the assembly's coordinate system and we attach basically this uh, bent plate as a sub material to that and it gets a sub mark and the, the dummy piece gets basically the main piece mark there if you found this content useful please subscribe to our channel and press the alerts button to be notified when we upload new content.